Now remember, the governor of the state has said Muslims were ready and determined to kill me. So I didn't know which interest he was representing. The man kept bugging. He said, look, if you can cooperate, I can give you a piece of land in Abuja. And I help you build a house there. I was a federal minister. Tell me who you are. Oh God, leave me alone. I am just an ordinary Nigerian passing through Nigeria. One funny pastor said to him, Come, come, come. What are you looking for? This man, if he touches you, all the sicknesses your body will disappear. <laughs> if he touches you, you will prosper. The man came back and asked me the fourth time, Did you say you are nobody? Somebody says you are somebody. He said, look, I'll give you two copies of Quran. My friend, I am not allowed to read Quran. I'm not even allowed to look at Quran. He said, you're confusing me. Then who are you? Right where you are tonight. Sit down. One of the reasons why I love pilot cars is because they speak to me. Life is made in a way that those who are desperate, the world makes a way for them. <laughs> we were driving through our back with our pilot cars escorting us, and we chased my sister out of the road. As she turned her car, she fell into a gutter. She was so angry. He said, when you're using a pilot car, traffic will obey you whether you're on the wrong side or right side. Yes, this is how life is made. If you make up your mind tonight to have your own double honor and double blessings, yeah. all the demons will give way. Yeah. Those who hate you will give way. Sickness will give way. Your enemies will give way. I don't know when I remember the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 51. Jesus asked the blind man, what can I do for you? What does that mean? It means that life is a kingdom of choices. What did I say? Life is a kingdom of choices. If you choose to remain in your sickness, so it shall be. If you choose to remain in your poverty, there are people who are busy accusing of that of stealing. Oh, have you seen his car? I'm sure he stole money to buy that car. That is a wrong attitude. It keeps you at the value of defeat. The right attitude is God who gave him that car is my God. Mine is on the way. When you say it, God will teach you what that man did to get what he got. When you hear of a, a girl getting married, don't accuse her of cheating herself. Just say God who gave her a husband. It's my God. Mine is on the way. There's what we call favor. Favor means that the ugliest girl can attract 
the most handsome man amongst us. Favor me that a rich boy can fall in love with a hopelessly wretchedly, suddenly ghostlessly poor girl. This is a mystery. Favor. Learn how to celebrate others. Every time I ask you to clap for the choir, some of you will find it difficult to clap. Men who do not celebrate others shall never be celebrated by anybody. The Bible said, What you sow is what you reap. That's how life is made. But I'm going back to determination. I want you to ask God to give you a compelling, unquenchable desire. To end this last year, I asked you to ask God. No, God had promised. Yours was to claim a year of double, su- double no, a, a year of uncommon success. Many of you never got there. When God said to me, "My this stretch of streets road, you can buy it with your own money." I ask God, is that a joke or is that a command? And God said, if you believe, things will begin to happen. Little did I know that two members of this fellowship are into road construction. I didn't know them. I never knew them. When NDDC gave the money to bureaus around my village. They were mobilized by NDDC. That was subtracted from the cost of the road God said I could build. And because the members of this fellowship, they were prepared to cut down the amount of money. What could have cost me about 25 million? They asked me to pay only 17 million 500 thousand naira. When the road was completed, all the motorcyclists in my entire clan, clan went there to pray for me. Elders of my community came to pray for me. I suddenly became an instant celebrity. But you can see God made it possible. And this night I want to announce that that God is your God. All I ask of you is recognize no obstacle. What did I say? Recognize no obstacle. When Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus, he did not recognize death, nor the power of the grave, nor the power of the coffin. He didn't recognize those forces. He simply said to Lazarus, What? Come forth. I'm sure if you were there, you would have said, Oh God, oh God, oh God. Pray Pentecostal prayer. Bind the demon of death, the demon of the grave, the demon of the, of the coffin. No. He ignored those forces. Make up your mind. Amen. Not to end this year without an evidence of double honor. Let's go to Isaiah chapter chapter 6 to 1, we'll take verse 7, 8, 9. What does it say? For your name, for your shame, ye shall receive double. For, for, all, for every time the enemy brought shame into your life, I'm sure you know that sin generates shame. I'm sure you know that sin strips you of covering and strips you of honor I'm sure you know that sin where there is sin in a family there will be no future for those who live there but now God is saying if there was sin in your family and you couldn't rise to a place of honor before now tonight there is a change 
for your shame, God will give you double honor. I'm asking to know how many of us believe this. That this night is a night of new beginning. Let, let us run down to chapter 5 of the book of Luke. Let's take verse 8, take 2, take verse 9, we take verse 10, we take verse 11. What did Peter do that earned him that double blessings? When Simon Peter saw it. When Simon Peter saw what Jesus had done for him. Wait, before we continue. How many of you have seen the miracle Jesus performed in your life last year? And even this year. Anybody who has seen something? Are you sure? So when I give you microphone to testify next week, you'll be able to shame Satan. Because Satan is saying that Jesus did not resurrect. And we're looking for proof producers that he lives. And he's ready to help you on every side of life. All those who have seen his hand at work, in your life you have seen evidence you have seen an evidence of his faithfulness of his being alive in your own life can you raise up your hand and wave it and shout hallelujah no i i, I want to hear hallelujah seven times Seat. By that one shout you have made this night, I want to announce that you have become the main man of your family. The same Peter we are talking about when the Holy Ghost came upon him, became the main man in Jerusalem. And I want to start from your family. You. I don't care how many times you failed before now. I don't care how many times the enemy pushed you down before now. From this night henceforth, you are going to be the main man of your family. of Deuteronomy chapter 28 we take verse 8 we take verse 10 and we take verse 11 and then we go to the book of Numbers chapter 25 we take 10 through 13 and then we shall begin to prepare for the Holy Communion the Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses raise your hands and declare and prophesy and say the Lord shall command blessings upon me Take your seat. Read on, sir. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. This is one line I like so much. God is saying, beginning tonight, whatever you set your heart to do, whatever you lay your hand to do, Whatever you desire to do. And remember that desire is a gift from the Holy Spirit. Most of the time, if not all of the time, every desire that comes from your heart is from God. It is a good desire. Not a desire to live in sin or to kill somebody. 
but a desire to succeed in life. A desire to live a life of holiness. A, a desire to turn away from the reproof of God. Let's see the book of Proverbs 123. There is something outstandingly great there. The Bible says, God said, if I reprove you, if I correct you, and you turn away from that thing that made me reprove you, I will pour my anointing upon you. And once God pours my anointing upon you, you become a man of exploits. Because I like to answer every person of life and solves every problem of life, including health problems. And then the Bible asks, read this here. Turn you at turn you at my reproof. Behold, behold, I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit upon you, and I will make known my words to you. What does that mean? God is saying number two, He will grant you revelational knowledge, prophetic knowledge, and insightful knowledge of the Word of God. That means when you open the Bible, you read and know what others will never understand. Can you now say you're a privileged person to be hearing these things this night? I don't know what and what God has been asking you to give up. You have to be to give up insulting your husband. I was giving an altar call in New Baptist. And I said to the converts, to the people that gave their lives to Christ, they put up to me, as a woman gives her life to her husband, Jesus, so I give my life to you. The woman fell off her seat. Madam, what's the problem? She said she had been married for five good years and refused to allow her husband to touch her. She said the man sleeps in a different room, she in a different room. Because to her, her father in law is a poor man and a native doctor. Therefore, she couldn't sleep with the son of a native doctor. But when she heard me say, as a woman gives her life to her husband, she saw her mistakes and saw her wrongdoing. And wait that night. Walk over to her husband and say, From now henceforth, I offer my body to you. I don't know why God is asking you to give up. It could be anything. But I'm sure God has spoken to your hearts and has shown you what it is. You know, I walk with God, we keep asking Him to please us, to give us the grace to obey Him. To give us the grace to rise above the weakness of our Father's house. To help us, every born again child of God is a, is a moral failure confessor. He says, I, may, I am not worthy. Father, I am not worthy. Father, I am not worthy. And tonight, he says, if you can turn away from my reproof, Anointing with anointing. I don't know whether you know that anointing enables a man to perform beyond his training and ability and education. You can do things that nobody believes you can. Something good, must tell me. Every time the Spirit of God came upon Samson, he shocked the whole world. You can also shock the world around you. Just by being honest with God. Don't give excuses. My problem is that we Nigerians were the greatest inventors of excuses. We are quick to give excuses. But a man of excuses is a man of failure. They say to God, I have failed you. Have mercy on me. Cleanse me with your blood. 
enable me to live the life that pleases you. He says he will plant you an insightful, perfected knowledge of the world. Why? Because no man can run faster than they can see. The understanding of the world of God determines how far you go in life. If you understand what I'm showing tonight, you're on your way to greatness. The Bible said, Where there was shame, God gave you double honor. Look into your life. Where did the enemy plant shame? The Bible says something wonderful will happen tonight. In our communion tonight, we are saying to God, all that we are asking for are already Jesus purchased blessings. They have been bought and paid for. Therefore, the seller must deliver those things to us. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus said it is finished. The price is already settled. The debt is settled. And therefore the enemy has no reason to rob you of that which God has promised you. A year of double honor. A year of double blessings. And I want to announce that it starts tonight. It starts tonight. But before we go to the communion table, do I have anybody here who knows what God has been asking him to give up, not to do again? And you're willing to mind to bring it to the altar, what we call your Agag. Agag stood between King Saul and God's command, which was of my real pride of life, ego. God has said to King Saul, destroy everything in Amalek. But the voice must have said to King Saul, if you destroy everybody, how would they know how great you are? Disobey God. Go home with the king of the Amalekites. He didn't need that. Every one of us must have what I call service relationship with God. And a life of total obedience. A life that says what you have asked me to do may not make sense. But I'm willing to obey you. I'll obey you at all costs. I'll obey you at any time. You, you are not obeying God to please anybody. No. Time and again, self will stand between you and God. And Peter asked this husband and wife, the amount you brought to the altar, is that what you realized from the cells? And they said yes. And they died. Somebody said after Jesus came, there was no more cross. That is nonsensical piece of ridiculous nonsense. At the time Peter conducted that service, Jesus, Jesus had come and gone. The cause of telling a lie before the Holy Spirit took their lives. Tonight I don't know what God has been asking you to give up. If you remember in stand up, don't come forward because we will not have space. If you know what God has been asking you to surrender. And you're ready to surrender tonight. Stand up. We'll quickly pray and prepare you for the Holy Communion. If you know what God has been asking you to surrender, to give up, stand up quickly. When God commanded Abraham, the Bible says he obeyed immediately. I want you to obey immediately. Don't cause me to start twisting your hands that you may say yes. If you are honest this night to stand before God qualified to be empowered, to be emboldened, to be commissioned.
to be made a candidate for double honor and double blessings. Stand up and say to God that my reluctance shall be taken away this night. My refusal to obey you completely and totally and implicitly shall not continue in my life. So persons can you stand up. Don't waste the Holy Spirit's time. Just stand up and join me as I say, I surrender. I surrender. Oh, to be my blessed Savior, I surrender. Oh, It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done tonight, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, it shall be permanent, permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for us, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, it shall be permanent. It shall be permanent. permanent. It shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, it shall be permanent. Stand up, everybody stand up. He shall be permanent. What the Lord shall do for me, he shall be permanent. Oh, 
person to person. Where there is weakness, turn that weakness into strength. As many are, are, are unable to take a position. As many as do not know how to step into the battle of life. As many as do not know what to do that the promises of them may be actualized in their lives. May you speak to them afresh now. Yeah. Where sin had limited anybody, let that sin be punished. Yeah. Where ancestral curse had limited anybody, let it be punished now. Father, I demand that everyone within the reach of my voice shall step into a life of double honor. Let every limitation be dismantled. Let every hindrance be dismantled. And every voice that speaks against anybody here shall speak no more. 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 Those who have been crawling through life, they shall pray no more. Although the enemy have been pushing down over and again, shall not be pushed down again. Father, let the miracle of healing and promotion. The miracle of restoration. Let the miracle of double honor. Let the miracle of double blessings be given to your people in Jesus' name. Father, because these blessings we are asking for are Jesus' birth blessings. Therefore, the enemy has no rights to deny us the actualization of these promises. Father, let no voice speak against us anymore. And any voice that speaks against us shall not be silenced. Every stone that we have thrown at us shall not become our stepping stone to greatness. Father, I demand everyone within the reach of my heart, my voice. I declare you, the main man of your family, the main girl of your family, the main woman of your family, the main man of your family, the main woman of your family, the main girl of your family, the main boy of your family. Father, this gathering is higher than the gathering of any witch or any wizard or any occultic people. Therefore, if they are gathering anywhere against any one of us, they shall not be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered, be scattered. Be scattered, be scattered.
Father, that pit they dug for us, they shall fall into them. Father, because we are of the seed of Abraham, we shall bow before no man, 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 no demon, no principality, no power, no wickedness in high places. Father, I command that presence of resentment that has stopped our girls from getting married is now turned into favor. Father, all those who are standing at the middle road of life without knowing what to do all those who are running in circles like blind horses tonight i demand they be given direction yeah. father direction is the master key to success i therefore declare they shall receive all round success they shall receive sweatless success Father, open the ears of everyone who is hearing me now. That each one may hear you and receive instruction from you. For double honor is the result of instruction. And you prosper by instruction. That instruct everyone here. Everyone here. Everyone here. Finally, I declare, beginning tonight, everyone's presence shall command recognition. Those who look down on us, whoever they are, shall soon look up to us for help. communion because these promises are Jesus bought nobody you have right to health right to prosperity right to promotion right to godly life right to unction right to anointing right to the power of God as they save you holy communion just remember that God's instruction triggers off 100 filled blessings as you take your own just say to God, these are Jesus bought blessings that I'm asking for. And let them come upon me. Let there be a change in my life. Why are you give us a corresponding song? Father, on that night you took the cup, you blessed it and you said, This is my blood which you shed for you the blood of the new covenant i therefore declare tonight 
Every covenant entered into by anybody on our behalf is now cancelled. Only this covenant of victory, the covenant of promotion and distinction, the covenant of good health, the covenant of deliverance from captivity, the covenant of all that is good, be given to your people. Father, we drink in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I sanctify this bread, and it ceases from being an ordinary bread. It's that night you broke bread and you said, this is my flesh, which was given for you. It is the flesh of the new covenant. Father, I repeat, every covenant entered into by any of our ancestors, by any of our village leaders, on our behalf is now cancelled. Only your covenant shall rule over us. For we have been bought from the marketplace of sin and taken away from the marketplace of poverty and struggling and humiliation and defeat. We declare tonight the beginning of our life of double honor, our life of double blessings. Father, whatever you want us to do to reach this appointed place, speak to us. Cause us to hear you. We are tired of struggling. We are tired of poverty and defeat and sin. We are tired of the life of gossip and scandal. We want to live a life dedicated and consecrated unto you. And that journey begins tonight. Father, I ask, every voice that speaks against us shall speak no more. Every stone placed upon us by any enemy shall not be returned to that enemy. Beginning now, at our parents, every door shut against us shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open, shall open. Shall open, shall open. Father, the Egyptians shall rule over us no more. Our enemies shall rule over us no more. Every red sea that blocks our way has now parted. And our wall of Jericho has also collapsed. We are victorious. We are unstoppable. And Father, I declare we have become dangerous in the hands of every enemy that wants to harass us. So it shall be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.